So the last couple of days, we've been working on John Walco's requests for the various Hammer uh, Mummy movies. And this is number three. Thank you, John, yet again. Today was a big color exposition in Deluxe, 1967, called The Mummy Shroud, which drew a lot of interest because it was more cerebral than most of the Mummy movies came out in the 50s and 60s. Again, uh, made by Hammer, and it was directed by John Gillen. It stars Andre Morel and David Buck as explorers who uncovered the tomb of an ancient Egyptian mummy. It also starred John Phillips, Maggie Kimberly, Elizabeth Sellers, and Michael Ripper as Longbarrow. Stuntman Eddie Powell, Christopher Lee's regular stunt double, played the mummy, brought back the life to wreak revenge on his enemies. The uncredited narrator in the prologue, sometimes incorrectly assumed to be Peter Cushing, is British actor Tim Turner. Now, this was the third of Hammer's four mummy films, a cycle which began with The Mummy, continued with The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, and ended with Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, which we'll talk about later. It was the last to feature a bandaged, bandaged mummy. The final film contained no such character. Now, this was the final Hammer production to be made at Bray, the company's home until 67, when its productions moved to Elstree Studios and occasionally Pinewood. Cinematography by Arthur Grant, Written by Gilling and Anthony Hines. Edited by Chris Barnes. Music by Don Banks. Again, Hammer Production, distributed by Warner. Came out in March in the U.S. and June in the U.K. with a budget of only $160,000. Now, The Mummy Shroud is set in the early 1920s and tells the story of a team of archaeologists who come across the, the lost tomb of the boy pharaoh K. Tobey. The story begins with a flashback sequence ancient year of Egypt and we see the story of how uh, Prem, a man servant of Keto Bay, speared away the boy when his father was killed in a palace coup and took him to the desert for production. The boy eventually dies and is buried. The story then moves forward uh, to 1920 and shows the expedition led by scientist Sir Basil Walden and businessman Stanley Preston finding the tomb. They ignored a dire warning issued to them by Hazmat, a local Bedouin, about the consequences for those that violate the tombs of ancient Egypt and remove the bodies in the sacred shroud. Sir Basil is bitten by a venomous snake just after finding the tomb. He recovers, but has a relapse after arriving back in Cairo. The curse of the mummy, mummy which happened in real life, of course. Preston takes advantage of this and commits him to his saint asylum to take credit for finding a tomb and the prince's mummy himself. Meanwhile, after being placed in the Cairo Museum, the mummy of Prem is revived when Hazmat chants the sacred oath on the shroud. Very effective scene, by the way. The mummy then proceeds to go on a murderous rampage to kill off the members of the expedition, beginning with Sir Basil after he escapes from the asylum. One by one, those who assisted in removing the contents of the tomb in Cairo are eliminated by such grisly means as strangulation, thrown, being thrown out of windows, and having uh, photographic acid thrown in their face. I can... I can tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, I worked in fix. It can do problems. Now, now, greedy Stanley Preston, the real villain of the piece, after repeated attempts to evade the murder investigations and flee for his own safety, safely, safety, is murdered in a Cairo side street by the avenging mummy. The remaining members of the party, Stanley's son, Paul Preston and Maggie, clear the Sangra, succeed in destroying the mummy. Now, the monthly Phil Bolton uh, wrote about it. It was a stilted rehash of the old avenging mummy routine, writing from time to time by Catherine Lassay as a toothless hag. Always good to have a good toothless hag to take your mind off the mummy. The rest of the cast huff and puff over the morbid lines, and the plot continue, contains no surprises. According to Variety, although macabre sequences create some tension and splash, a lot of gore, dialogue, characterizations, and plot have little to recommend them. Gilling both wrote the screenplay and directed it, but showed little originality in either endeavor. What uh, more more people said this was negative than positive, and according to the All Movie Review, a modern review, the movie is a standard issue spook show that recycles elements from the previous Mummy titles. What are any of the atmosphere, imagination, or suspense? Our usual review on Blu-ray.com for the 2020 Blu-ray release complemented the film's visual quality, the colors of Amazing. The framing of images is excellent. The bam balance of images artful. Now, the big negative of this movie was the plot. But the thing is, the visuals were tremendous. If you've got a high def TV, this is one of the, the one of the, uh, the deluxe color, color really has come true in every facet. And what he called the creeping terror is really effective. See, because the movie moves so swiftly and it's so beautiful. 
uh, you kind of forget the fact this is a standard Bummy movie. Now, when it was released on DVD in the States in 2000 on Anchor Bay, uh, this was the PG uncut version. Now, uh, it did get an original X certificate in the cinema because of sexuality and murders. It was released on Blu-ray again on January 2020 by Shout with a commentary track making of Doc and other extras. Now, the film was eventually adapted into a 12-page comic strip for a magazine, The House of Hammer, which came out in December 71, published by Top Sellers. It was drawn by David Jackson from a script by Donnie Evanel. The cover of the issue featured a painting by Brian Lewis depicting a scene from the film. Now, when you get Deluxe Color, you know you know it's going to be a very interesting movie no matter what it was. So enjoy the visuals and leave your brain at the door because that's what mummy movies are. It's it's not like uh, Christopher Lee, you know, uh, holding people in their place and coming over to suck blood, the sexuality. The mum, mummy is just carnage, no matter what movie it is. So, John, thanks for your request. If you like what we're doing here with our mummy request, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. But don't forget, we're also going to be taking a look at the original Universal Mummy series. Daniel Bowden, uh, one of our followers of the channel, mentioned it. And I had to tell Daniel, let me get you the hammer mummies first, and I'll, I'll get to the Universal Mummies. The big difference between the Universal Mummies and this one, great acting, great visuals, black and white with the movie, movie the originals, with the hammer, mediocre acting, mediocre plot, but great visuals. So with a hammer movie, you're paying for the color, but you're not staying for the plot. Or if it's not Cushing or Michael Goff or Christopher Lee, you can leave you hanging. And Oliver Reed, of course. Thanks for listening. Bye.